Good morning. <laughs> Happy Black History Month. <laughs> Dr. Carter G. Woodson once said, we have a wonderful history behind us and it is going to inspire us to greater achievements. In that spirit, I would like to welcome you all to the annual Black History Month program celebration, featuring our esteemed guest, Dr. Eric Thomas. I am Kavion Washington. I have the privilege of serving as senior class president and your master of ceremonies for this morning. The program will proceed as follows, as printed. Uh, we will have first a welcome from Dr. Brock Talley, the Vice Chancellor of Enrollment Management and Student Success. Following Dr. Talley will be university greetings by Mr. UAPP, Jalen Phillips. Good morning. Good morning. It's a great day to be a Golden Lion. It's a great day to be a Golden Lion. It is my honor to welcome you to the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff on behalf of our Chancellor, Dr. Lawrence B. Alexander. As we pause to reflect on the contributions of African Americans that, that African Americans have made to this country, we cannot adequately talk about Black History Month without mentioning the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. You see, there are people like Dr. Samuel Kuntz who perfected the kidney transplant who are graduates of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. There are people like Dr. Charlie Nam the first African-American chancellor at Indiana University, who are graduates of the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Now, where we, whereas we pause to recognize our graduates, we also have to recognize future up-and-coming leaders, like Ms. UAPB, Jay West, future Attorney General of these United States of America. <laughs> or, or a marketing mogul, our SGA president, Ms. Kennedy Marks. You see, history has taken place at this university, and we will continue to make history as we have the best and the brightest students on this side of heaven. Great day, and welcome to the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. Well, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to. Greetings, my Golden Lion family. I said, greetings, my Golden Lion family. We give honor to everyone in their respective places, to our chancellor and his cabinet. We're so elated to have you in Golden Lion country. If you would do something for me, if I can get every black male to stand on your feet today, every black male. Look at the black males we have here today. Women, give us a hand, women, give us a hand. All right, black males, I want you to look at your brother and tell him, brother, I'm on my way. These are your greetings. Now we will have an introduction of our speaker by the Student Government Association President, Ms. Kennedy Marks. After Ms. Marks, the next voice you will hear will be that of Dr. Eric Thomas. Good morning. It's not who you are that holds you back. It's who you think you are, Eric Thomas. Life is truly a full circle. Dr. Thomas and I go way back, even though he doesn't know. I was introduced to his work as a senior in high school by my science teacher, who showed us his Thank God It's Monday videos every Monday. Each week, I'd be so excited to be inspired by his energy, his consistency, and his seemingly supernatural saying. Dr. Thomas is best known for his quote, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. After hearing this quote by Eric Thomas, as a young scholar, I was so inspired and felt that I could be my best self, overcoming homelessness while being a high school dropout to now being the number one motivational speaker in the world. He impacts millions of people each day, not only with his motivational message, but also through his ministry and books. Join me, stand on your feet. Join me in welcoming the critically acclaimed author, world-renowned speaker, educator, and pastor, Dr. Eric Thomas.
All right, let's go to work. If you have a piece of paper, pen, pull it out. You got a phone, pull it out. All right, let's go to work. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to write down on that sheet of paper, you know, the people that mean the most to you. All right, the people that mean the most to you. And what I want you to think about when you write that down is I want you to think about not only the people that mean the most to you, but the people that are affected by the decisions you make on a daily basis. I promise you I wish I would have had somebody, the young man here who's 16, I promise you, I wish I had somebody when I was 16 that would have pulled me to the side and made me think. All right, so one of the things I want you to do is I want you, I want you to think. All right, when you leave this place today, for every individual in the room, I don't care what your career path is, I want you to pray that you become a phenomenal decision maker. A phenomenal decision maker. All right? So I want you to think about those people you love. I want you to write their names down. And the reason why I want you to think about those people is because when people ask me, what's the difference between the homeless ET and the number one motivational people in the world? And the difference between the homeless ET is that he didn't care about nobody but himself. Like, that's all he thought about. The 15-year-old the E.T., the 16-year-old E.T., he didn't think about nobody but himself, right? So, so here, here's what I mean. So I was 30, I think I might have been 30, 31 when I got my first degree. Like, literally. Like, the very first degree. So what that means is, despite the sweat, the blood, and the tears that my mom put in, Originally, as a single parent mom, she didn't get no return on her investment. Like, yo, as a mother, like, your first big, like, ah, thank you, is when your child marched across the stage. I was 30. So my mom never, I robbed my mom of that. I don't care what I do, she was robbed. I don't care what accomplishments I make. She didn't get that. But had I been thinking about my mom at 13, had I been thinking about my mom at 14, 15, I wasn't thinking about her. I wasn't thinking she got kicked out the crib. She got kicked out of her house because she was pregnant with me at 17. And my grandma was like, look, I'm not trying to be funny. I got 14 kids. Like, I can't afford to feed another mouth. So you got to go. Right? My mom decided to have me. At 17, she could have easily been like, you know what? It's too much. I'm just going to get an abortion. Flat out. And I need y'all to understand something. It wasn't popular in the 70s to have a baby. Like, that's some popular stuff now. Like, they got programs for it. I'm just being real, like grants and stuff. <laughs> like departments. You get pregnant, you go to a department. You get pregnant when my mom got pregnant, you are cursed, you shamed. Like, people are shaming you. You walking around with a child and then you have a baby. Like, people are looking at you like you are, you, like, I ain't gonna use the term, but they not looking at you like you a lady. And my mom, in the midst of all of that, still had. I wasn't thinking about that, though. I was thinking about the little homie next to me telling me jokes that I don't even know today. You know what's funny? And I need y'all to understand something. 99.9% of the people I call a friend in high school, I don't even know none of them right now. Like, I don't hang out with none of them. Like, none of us ain't cool. And here in college, 80% of the people that you around every day, you're not going to know. But you know, you know, you know who still, in the midst of all that foolishness, who still had my back. I graduated from Oakwood College, Huntsville, Alabama. That's 776 miles from Detroit. Guess who drove down? Mom and grandma. You feel me? Grandma right there. And my mom was cheering for me like I was like, like I had graduated early, like I was 21. I was like 30 something. My mom was cheering like I was, I was like, mom, relax. I got two kids, a beard, you know what I'm saying? My mom, that's my baby. I'm talking about I graduated like in my 30s with the first degree. And mom was acting like I was like on time. <laughs> she was acting like I, I was a hot, like I had graduated with like rope, like I had a rope and some ropes. I ain't had no cords or nothing. I just had like my plain little hookup at 30. So I need you to do me a huge favor. So what I want you to do every day, see, because it's easy to be average when you're just thinking about yourself. Or it's easy to be average. It's easy to hit the snooze button. It's easy not to go to class. It's easy not to do what you're supposed to do. It's easy to hang out with the wrong person. When all you're thinking about is you, it's easy to be average. 
So we're not here today. Like HBCUs didn't start because of average people. You gotta understand that. Now I'm gonna, y'all young, but I'm gonna, you know, just take you back just a little bit and show you what I mean by they were average. Can I say this to you? And I don't mean to be disrespectful, I got a PhD. Had I been the Eric Thomas that I was when I got my PhD 200 years ago, I wouldn't even been a lot. Like, they wouldn't even, like, I wouldn't be able to get in school. I'm just keeping it 100. Like, I'm grateful for all our ancestors did because now you can get in school and be average. Our ancestors, when they got accepted, do you know how sweet they had to be to get accepted in this college? Like, they just letting us in now because they care. You know what I'm saying? It's like, now they're like, we care for you. We don't want you on the streets. I know your SAT score was 15, but we go, we have a program. <laughs> you feel me? Like in 2020, it's a program for everything. Like it's a program. There was no programs in 1896. What no programs? Your grades was your program. And so listen to me, Booker T. Washington, this is history, walked 500 miles to go to Hampton. I can't get you to walk to class. It's like right up the street. I'm just being real, like you won't walk to class because you're like, it's raining. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you like, it's raining, my hair. You ain't had no hair 200 years ago when you were African American. You ain't had nothing. You ain't had no rights. You didn't have nothing. You went to school as your own, that's the problem. They went to school as their only way out. You don't see it like that. And so here's what I need you to do. I need you to stop thinking about you. Because if Martin Luther King was thinking about him, I promise you he wouldn't have died like, he, listen to me, he had a PhD at 26. He didn't need no civil rights. He had a job. He had a house. He had a car. And Rosa, like, I'm just being real, Coretta wasn't for it. Like, Coretta wasn't happy at first. Like, she wasn't geeked about it at first. She just, that was his dream. She's like, whoa, we got to move out our, our neighborhood into the hood and let them use our car and we going to walk? Martin was like, I got a dream. She's like, all right, I guess. <laughs> I'm just being real, go back in history. Like, she, she had like their life. She was a wife. She was thinking about their family and their kids and their life. Martin was like, we gotta forget us and think about them. He didn't have to die that early. He was a genius. Dog owner, you just see Dr. Martin King in some pictures. He was a genius. He was a genius. He said he got the phone number to the President of the United States of America on speed dial. Genius. Some of us, as sweet as we are, we don't have connection to the White House. He can come and go as he wanted to. You are so lazy because you're thinking about you. You are so selfish because you're thinking about you. You are so lazy because you're thinking about you. And African American history started with a group of people who weren't thinking about themselves. They were thinking about the next generation. So they were willing to go through slavery so they can get us to freedom. And your selfish butt. I'm just gonna keep it 100, I ain't mad at nobody. I just wanna be real with you. So we start here, stop being selfish. Okay, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest of selfishness, just write down how selfish you are. Just be real, just say I want you, you're gonna learn today. You're gonna, you're gonna feel it today. Ain't nobody playing today, you're gonna feel it. How selfish are you? Do you think about your mom? Do you think about your dad? And if your dad wasn't in your life, you really need to be thinking. I walked away, this is my last year in corporate. I'm going back to the school. Somebody like, E, you make 50 grand to $100,000 an hour to do corporate. Why would you leave that and come somewhere where you ain't gonna make that kind of money? Because of the spirit of my ancestors. If my ancestors would've just stayed with what was convenient to them, I wouldn't be where I am now. So I've been blessed, now it's time to go back and make some sacrifices. Because that's what we do. Like, that's what we were taught. That's our DNA. Now parents, I'm about to get on you one quick second, and then we're gonna come back to the babies. Mama, stop spoiling these kids. Stop. I'm just being real, stop. These babies, now nah, they got a birthday, they got two cakes, it'll turn into a birthday week. I said, how you got a birthday week? It's a day, they got a whole week? He got two cakes? Look, when I was coming up, my grandma would bake me a cake for my birthday. You get the first slice and that's it and you pass the rest out to your cousins, you know what I'm saying? And the people on the block, like I'm like, grandma, that ain't even my cousin. She like, sit your butt down, you got yours, sit down. 
and the whole cup, we got cake. I'm like, that's my cake. She's like, that ain't your cake, that's your slice. I'm just being real, parents, y'all spoiling these kids. They get two cakes, can't nobody get none. They get a whole week. They brats. And then we got to deal with them. Now they come to me looking for me to spoil them. I'm like, I ain't your mama. That's your mama that's spoiling you, I'm not your mama. So, so do me a favor, parents, I know it's going to be hard. Don't prepare your babies for your house. Prepare them for the world. No, 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 I feel you. I'm a parent. Don't get it twisted. I didn't want to whip my son. I didn't want my son to be mad at me. But I had two options. I could prepare him for the house for 18 years, and then for the rest of his life, he's going to the world and he's struggling. Or I could make him struggle for 18 years, and when he get into the real world, he's ready for the real world. So parents, do me a favor. Let's prepare them for the world. Let's not prepare them for our house, our basement. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say it one more time, I'm going to get off of it. <laughs> Ain't no degrees in the basement. No degrees in your house. They're going to come into a real world. We're going to prepare for the real world. All right, so let's go. All right, so you got your mama name down, your daddy name down, your cousins, your siblings, whoever you have down. You got their names written down. All right, here's the other thing I need you to do, and most of you not, you don't know, but I need you to find out what your calling is. What's your vocation? Like, what are you going to do? With, what are you, not what are you going to do to make money. What are you going to do for the rest of your life while you're on this earth? I want you to write that down. If you do not know it, I need you to find out what it is. Like wake up every single day and do it. All right, so let's get started. All right, I'm gonna give you 10 quick things. I'm gonna let you get out of here. All right, number one, you gotta do me a huge favor. All right, write this down. Average, good, great, phenomenal. Write it down. Average, good, great, phenomenal. When I say the likes of Martin Luther King, that's phenomenal. When I say Booker T. Washington, phenomenal. When I say W.E.B. Du Bois, phenomenal. Right? I met two alphas earlier, right? And I was like, they, you know, looking good. And I said, bro, y'all got to do me a favor. Like, tell me about, tell, tell, like, don't just wear the, tell me who. So I started naming it. It's like, you know, I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I know who was in your organization. I'm nothing, but I know. I studied my history. So you got to tell me who so that I can challenge you to be them. You got to tell me who. You, if you have to, you got to tell me, like, who, who are the honorary members? So if you tell me Dr. Moses the King, then you just can't walk around with the colors. If you tell me Dr. Moses the King, if you tell me W.E.B. Du Bois, then you just can't walk around with the colors on. If you tell me Dr. Moses the King in the 1960s, then you got to be him in 2020. So the first thing I need you to do is I need you to add, I need you to answer yourself, not me. Are you average? Are you good? Are you great or phenomenal? What's your commitment? You heard what she said. I'm the number one motivational speaker in the world. I don't negotiate no more. When I'm dealing with corporate, we don't play. Now I'm dealing with, you know, my people. We can do a little, you know, let's talk. You feel me? I know you, you know what I'm saying? Let's work it out. You know what I'm saying? Give me what you can and then let me get a nice little lunch. Okay? Coming down south, somebody know how to cook, all right? Call grandma if you can't. If they don't have it on campus, go find grandma. And I'll stop by her house. She ain't even got to bring it here. I'll stop by like Marlon back in the day and grab your plate to go, right? And feel good about the peach cobbler and the discount, right? You gotta hear what I'm saying, but when I'm dealing with corporate, when I'm dealing with other folk, it ain't no negotiation. It's three first class tickets, ain't no negotiating. It's a suite in a five star resort. It ain't no negotiating, why? I'm phenomenal and you will treat me as such. The problem with you is most of you young people want phenomenal when you average. You're sitting around here begging teachers for a grade. Earn your grades. You don't beg no teacher for no grade, you earn that grade. You're going to the teacher the week of. Have you lost your mind? Have you lost your mind? Man, I'm challenging y'all. Hear what I'm saying to you clearly. Have y'all lost your mind? Y'all doing less in 2020 with cell phones. Y'all doing less with Wi-Fi than those individuals that was enslaved. It was folks that was enslaved doing more than y'all doing. You have people that was in bondage, getting whipped getting free, freeing themselves. Harriet Tubman, didn't nobody, didn't nobody go, Harriet Tubman, I'm, I'm sorry, I'll, we treated you, I'm, our apologies, go get your freedom. Sister girl got her freedom and they put a bounty on her. I don't care, find her, bring, us, bring her to us, 
she, she was by herself, freed herself, came back and got 800 more and was 800 and zero. She didn't lose one for now. You mean to tell me all you can do with this freedom we got is party? That's all you can do with all this freedom, with all these grants, with these schools that you can get into now that our ancestors couldn't get into, right? Little Rock Nine, right up the street. They gotta go to school with dogs. They gotta go to school with the National Guards. They dealing with teachers that can't stand their guts, and yet they still gotta go to class. And still they getting spit on and kicked and talked about. And they're still able to go to class, and not only go, they did well enough to get accepted in college. You got teachers that love you and you can't get a dog on C? Have you lost your mind? You can't get a 2.0 with teachers that look like you. They look like you, they love you, and you can't get a 4.0. Lazy, that's what you are. I challenge you when you leave this room, number one, I need you to make a commitment. Be honest about where you are. Circle that boy. I woke up one day and was like, yo, E, you average, bro. You average, you a high school drop. I was below average. You a high school drop out living in the abandoned buildings. You average. You begging people for money. You sleeping in people's house, faking it like you're not sleeping there, but you homeless, so you fake. You average, you work at McDonald's. You done dropped out of high school. You and you are ashamed to this culture. I had to wake up one day and just be like, flat out, bro, you ashamed. You are ashamed to this dynasty. It's a dynasty. You are, you, you are ashamed. And I woke up one day, it was like, yo, E, let's get started. All right, number two, I woke up, I looked in the mirror, and I took ownership. Write that down. I bet not. You grown. I bet not. Y'all, 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 you. You want to dog your professors out, talking about you didn't know. Read the syllabus. Have you lost your mind? You didn't know. It's, it's sitting there. Ain't nobody about to spoon feed you no more. Didn't nobody teach you how to do TikTok. You ain't got like no TikTok 101. The introduction to TikTok. Instagram 212. Ain't no Instagram 212. Y'all on your phones killing the game. And while y'all killing the game on social, there are people in other countries learning your language, coming over here, doing better than you in classes, and taking your dog on jobs. And you're not stupid, you're not dumb, you lazy. You do what you want to do when you want to do it. You can't go to class, but y'all got the whole party thing. You got the whole, the week, Friday, Saturday, after church, Sunday, y'all got the whole club scene on lockdown. It's organized. Y'all got to act in a fool on lockdown. Fighting, carrying on. Fight, fighting for what? Greeks, y'all got something that our ancestors created because we were institutions where they did not bless us, so we came together to put our resources together so that we can graduate and go to another level, and y'all still on some haze and fooling. We already got beat up by them. Why are you beating up on each other? been beat up on for 400 years. Now you got an institution where people of all colors, all background, all socioeconomic statuses are here to support you. People who could have went to other, let me tell you something, I worked at Michigan State University. It, people who could easily go to other institutions and work and make a little bit more money and not have to deal with some of the stuff that they have to deal with here. No, I'm being real. They could go somewhere else, make more money, and those professors and those administrators and staff decided to stay here because they love you enough, but you don't love yourself enough. Listen to me. After today, I want you to take ownership. I better not hear nothing about your daddy. Okay, be honest. Show me how many of y'all, your biological father didn't live in your house with you. Let me see your hand. Be honest. Your biological father. All right, hands down. I don't want to hear nothing about him no more. You feel me? My daddy wasn't in my life. That's cute at 10. I'm just being real. My father wasn't in my life. I talked to my man now when I was 30. We built a relationship. We talk on Saturday from 6 to 6.30. I woke up one day and was like, yo, I wish my father would come in my life. It's like, e, he ain't coming. You keep saying, I'm a high school dropout because my mom got pregnant with me at 17. I'm a high school dropout and living in the bad village because my daddy wasn't in my life. What if my mom would have waited until she was 24, 25 and they were married? What if that wasn't if I wasn't an accident? What if they had a nursery with my name on it? What if they had insured? Eric, they don't. It's not going to happen. If 
you're going to save yourself and get out of these beds and buildings, you're going to have to do it yourself. Whatever it is you want, you have what it takes to do it, but you cannot do it when you blame other people and make it, because when you blame them, you give them the power. When you take ownership, you got the power. I went from abandoned buildings to number one in the world. I'm, it was hard. The first thing I had to do was look in the mirror. It's like, bruh, you owe yourself. Bruh, apologize to yourself. Write that down. That's number three. Go home and apologize to yourself. You owe yourself an apology. How many of y'all in this room? Young men, young women, you in this room. You got a C average. You know you better than that. Let me see your hand. You know you better than that. Let me see your hand. How many of y'all got a B average and you know you better than that? Let me see your hands. How many of you, some of y'all are here with A's, but you know you can do a whole lot better, but you just... So I need you to be a favor. Number three, I need an apology. Like, go right, do a written apology to yourself. I'm not playing, I'm serious. Go look in the mirror like, yo, I'm sorry. I did you wrong. Some of you laughing. You know what's so funny? You will hold somebody else accountable for when they dog you out, but you won't hold yourself accountable when you dog you out. You a child. That's a baby. Somebody else do you wrong, you all up and they, you on Facebook, Instagram, you dogging them out, social media, you done went. Can y'all do me a favor too? Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Stop being upset and putting it on social media and it's there forever. And when you come to me for a job and I tell you no, and you don't know why, because I was reading all your stuff when you was 22, and I don't want to hire nobody, I don't want no, I'm almost 50 years old, I don't want no drama. I'm a grown man, I don't deal with drama. And I look at your social media, I'm like, oh, you skilled, but you drama. I'm good on that. If I hire you, you about to bring all that drama to my job. Somebody about to come up here and shoot me. <laughs> Looking for you. <laughs> I'm just being real. You done got in tune with somebody. They know where you work. You done, they done came to the job. Now you done got, you about to get me shot or me go to jail because I'm about to shoot them. You bringing all that drama, do me a favor. Get off of social media. If you got something to say to somebody, go say it to them. All right, and some of y'all too young, so don't say it in their face. Something might happen, go to class. Take your frustration out on your paper. I'm mad at you. Took 300 page work. All right, so look, ownership, right? We're gonna take full ownership. I don't blame nobody. Even when one of my staff members do something they ain't got no business doing, I never blame them. I say, you hired them. That's your responsibility. You should have hired better. Does that make sense? So number three, we're going to do what? How many of y'all, for real, you owe yourself an apology? Let me see your hand. Be honest. You owe yourself an apology. Good. In the next 24 hours, I want you to take care of it. All right, let's do this. We got 10, 7 to go. Give me the first one again. Good. Make a commitment to who? Yourself and the people you love. For real, make a commitment. How many of y'all, for real, you don't have a commitment right now? Like, for real, like you just wake up every day, you don't have a commitment for February. Just be honest, raise your hand. You've not made a commitment for the month of February. You don't have one for the month of March. Let's be honest, let me see your hand. Good, that's where it starts, right? So we're going to make a commitment. I made a commitment in January. I'm going to work out 25 out of 31 days. That was my commitment in January. Guess how many days I worked out in January? 25. He said 26. I wish. I was close to 26, but guess what? I made 25, so I did 25. The reason why you haven't committed to anything because you haven't committed to anything. And I need you to do me a favor. I need you to make a commitment. Make a realistic one. Mine was just treadmill, 11 incline, 2.5 for an hour. That's it. 500 calories. I ain't do nothing else. People are like, oh, E, you working out? I'm like, oh, you got to do, but do the blur me, boy. I'm like, I'm not about to do that. Blurred me gonna turn into me hurting my leg and then I ain't gonna do nothing. I'm just gonna do 25 days of the exact same thing. Came into this month, I was like, how many days? 29. You doing 25? I'm like, nope, it was 31 last time. It's only 29 this time. So I'm not doing 25, like 23, 24. But I added like the leg lift boys for the ab and then 20 pounds 100 times. So I added something in February. I don't know what we're gonna do in March, but I, we made a commitment in January. We made a commitment in February. Make a commitment. Do me a favor, call your mama and tell your mama to commit. Call your daddy, if, you, if your daddy in your life, call your daddy and tell your daddy to commit. Call somebody and tell them what you're committing to do so they can do what? They can hold you accountable. All right, here's the last one I need you to do with the commitment. Punish yourself if you don't do the commitment. Punish yourself. So 
But me and my little homie, we like accountability partners, where I give you five grand if I don't do what I'm supposed to do. No, it's gotta hurt. If it don't hurt, it ain't, it ain't real. I'm just being real. If it don't hurt, it ain't real. That's why most of you don't do nothing, because it don't hurt. Then you want to call your mama whining about what's going on in college. My daughter called me the other day. She's a senior at Michigan State. She called me the other day about a teacher. It was like, Dad, I don't know if she liked me. I don't know if this. I don't know if that. I was like, baby girl, I ain't mad at you if you're just trying to tell me who. But I'm, I'm a grown man. I ain't about to come up there and talk to your teacher. You need to talk to your teacher. I'm a grown man. I already know what I can do to your teacher. I'm a grown man. I, I, I know what I can do. We pay 50 grand. I already know the conversation I have with you. And I know the results that I'm going to get. But me going in and fighting your battles ain't about to help you. Because I can't go and fight every battle you got. You're going to have to go figure it out on your own. But we could talk about it, but you're going to have to go figure it out on your own. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Stop calling your mama. You walking around here acting like you're big and bad, but you call your mama every time you got to make a decision. Stop calling your mama. Listen to me. Y'all trying to act like y'all big and bad. You ain't big and bad. You ain't paying tuition. I'm just being real. You spoiled. Back in the day, you had to go to school and have a job. It wasn't like, ah, now you like, I'm stressed. I'm like, what happened? I got 12 credit hours. I'm stressed out. 12 credit hours? I got 16. I can't hardly breathe. They had 18 and still had to take care of their families and still had to work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Good. Number one, make a commitment. Number two, take ownership. Good. Whose fault is it? Your fault. Even when it's their fault. It's your fault. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even though it was my old dude's fault for not being in my life, I can't put it on him. He's not trying to be, he's not trying to win a Nobel Prize. He wasn't trying to get no PhD. He wasn't trying to write 10 books. I ain't mad at my man. But 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 I can't expect him to do something in my life. This is my life. At the end of the day, it's only one person counting on ET. That's ET. Yeah, my wife counting on me, I doubt. But the first person that's counting on ET is ET. I don't make no excuse. I had a gig last night. My agent was supposed to call. I called two, three days ago. They told me my flight is at four to get here. I'm saying four, I'm speaking at four, it's not possible. I didn't pick up the phone and call nobody like, I pay you to do my flight, you mess my flights up. I just changed the flights. My wife was hurt. She's like, they get it too late, we can't even sit together. I was like, ooh, that's first class problems. I'll see you from the, I'll see you from the back, it's okay. Seely, don't leave me. I'm right here. I ain't going nowhere. Spoke, finished at six, got to the airport, started snowing. I just started praying, like, yo, God, I'm, I'm not mad at the snow, but I got to get to Little Rock. I got to get to Atlanta to get my connection. We landed at 1017. Our flight left Atlanta at 1040. My wife, like, what you think going to happen? I was like, I don't know. We're just going to get off and we're going to go walk to the gate. He's going to walk to the gate. So we walked to the gate. She's like, <laughs> I say, like, sweetheart, slow down. She's like, let's run. I was like, who you got MS? Don't stroke out. Okay, don't stroke out. We're going to walk, and everything's going to be all right. We walked there. If the line's still long, she went to go use the bathroom. My wife was like, you know what? That was 20 minutes. Our, our, our clothes might not even make it. I was like, if the clothes don't make it, boo, I can hit Walmart. And then call them and beg them for a shirt. Get a little sweat. Got there on time, got here, the bags were there, soaking wet. I know why they were soaking wet. It was raining in Atlanta, I get it. Got my bags, got to the hotel, 12 o'clock at night. Still got up at 5 o'clock in this morning to work out. Ain't no excuses. Still got up and worked out. Still did my hour prayer call, my business call on the way here. Still got here in time for the breakfast. Did the breakfast, took the pictures, talked to folks. I'm here. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Ain't nobody got time for no excuses. Don't nobody want to hear your reasons. Execute. That's number four. Write it down. Execute. People look at you differently when you execute than when you whine it. Don't nobody take you serious when you whine it and you got excuses. My daughter gonna tell me the other day, she had a presentation. She's like, Dad, they just, I, I, they didn't give me enough time. I said, well, when did they tell you? She said, 30 days ago. I was like, ooh, how much time you need? I thought it was like a week. She gave you a week. Execution is worship.
People treat you different when you worship. When she made the intro, she said one thing. He put a series of videos out every Monday for 10 straight years. He was consistent. And then when the world liked my videos on Monday, we put one out a day. And then when the world liked the one a day, we put out two a day. And then when the world liked the two a day, we put out three a day. Consistency. I didn't say I was the best. I'm just the most consistent. No excuses. Put that down. All right, come on, I'm gonna need you to do some self-reflection. I do make excuses. I walk around here talking about how grown I am, but I do make excuses. I do have good reasons. Let me see your hands real quick. You make it, come on, just be real. You do make it, yep, I got a couple excuses. Good, come on, real reasons. Some of y'all, for real, how many of y'all got real reasons? Raise your hand. Like some of your stuff be real. Let me see your hand. Don't nobody care. Don't nobody care. No, I'm just being real. Don't nobody care. Okay, I'm sorry, that's a lie. Don't nobody care but your mama. Your mama probably care about that. My baby, it's hard on my baby. Like, man, I don't care nothing about your little baby. I'm paying your baby six figures a year. I need my work done. I need my videos produced. I don't care nothing about your baby. Um, uh, one of my homies, I feel sorry for him. He lost his grandma and he flew to go to be with his grandma on Wednesday and we had a conference on uh, Saturday and our corporate office told him, uh, where, what you doing? He's like, well, I'm going to be with my grandma. We're like, we got a conference on Saturday, and we need you. He's like, but well, my grandma died. I said, you've been knowing your grandma was going to die. Your grandma been in the hospital for over a year and survived. You, you buried your grandma on Wednesday. The conference on Saturday. So go be with your family. Come do the conference on Saturday, and you can go back with your family on Sunday if you want to. But we got a conference on Saturday. And we need you, because you are number one exit. We need, are you hearing what I'm saying? Did we send flowers as a company? Absolutely. And a nice little letter. Yeah, we sent both. Yeah, and help with the plane ticket. Absolutely. But on Saturday, we need you here, and you can go back whenever you want to. Why? Because in the real world, if you're waiting for things not to happen to be successful, you ain't gonna never be successful. Stuff's gonna always happen. So people who need things to be great to make things happen, it's never gonna happen for you. You ain't gonna never be number one. I'm number one in the world. They sent my grub, they sent my mother-in-law home with cancer. Go home. That was 10 years ago. She still said it. My wife was diagnosed with MS four years ago. I lost five aunts to cancer in less than seven years. Life happens. You don't get to stop because life happens. I still got to put my videos out. You don't care nothing about my auntie. You don't care nothing about my auntie. You want your videos. And I put them out at 3 o'clock in the morning. Listen to me very closely. If your ancestors could execute in slavery, if your ancestors could execute in slavery, why surely you ought to be able to execute in 2020. Does that make sense? Good, what's number four? What's number four? What's number four? And when you execute, people treat you differently. So I'm gonna say this and we're gonna move on to the other ones. I just wanna make sure I'm clear. So I'm in Houston, Super Bowl. I work for the Super Bowl. That's when you execute. So I'm doing my thing with the youth at the, ex at the Super Bowl. I think it's Saturday, I got the day off. I'm walking through the mall. I see about 10 dudes in the mall. I'm like, whoa, this is different. You know what I'm saying? It's usually like 10 dudes. You know what I'm saying? Anytime you see 10 bros together, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like that arrests your attention. I'm like, oh, it's 10 dudes. And I got my girl with me by myself and 10 hood looking dudes. So I'm like, all right, boo, go and walk on that side over there. I don't want to cause no problems. I don't know what's going on. I look up, my man, like, what up, E? I'm like, what up, bro? Look closely with me, man. Meek like, E, what's up, bro? I was like, what up, Meek? like, yo, I fooled you. I was like, bad. I got a call. Now, you got to understand something. I'm, not that I'm not excited about Meek Mills, it's just I'm old. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm old. And I've been praying 20 years in a row. When you get up and pray to Jesus twin, every single day, ain't no, like, for real, it's just, like, when you're in the presence of Jesus, ain't nobody big time, not even you. I'm just saying, when you're in the presence of Jesus, ain't nobody big time. So Meek, like me and Meek, start chopping it up. I fool with you. I get a call from Sony Records three, four months later. Like, yo, Meek, no, I'm sorry, a year later, Meek went to prison for a little bit. Came out, like, yeah, I got an album. I want you to start the album. Wins and losses. So every time I go to a stadium and I hear wins and losses, I hear myself coming out. You got to dream the dream. You got to eat the dream. You got to sleep. Every time they play it, it's a check. Execution is worship. 
It's a check every single time. My grandma called me like, baby. I'm like, yes, grandma. She don't call me by my name. Baby. I'm like, yes, grandma. She's like, is that, was that you on no chicken commercial? I was like, yes, grandma. I thought that was your voice, baby. You getting free chicken from them? Yes, grandma. I'm getting free chicken, grandma. I don't eat chicken right at that time. I wasn't really eating chicken, but I do get free. She talking about the Wingstop commercial. That paid for my daughter to go to college. When you excellent, listen to me, they didn't even ask me to go in the studio. They just asked for permission to rip it off YouTube. Execution is worshipped. I just got a call, flying to LA. Disclosure, you probably don't even know who they are. Disclosure used my stuff five, six years ago, and it was a number one album. They just called like, yo, can you do, we got a third album coming out, we need you. When you excellent, when you average, you attract certain things. For you who hate drama, stop being average. It just seemed like drama and average go together. It's just, that drama and average just be all on each other. When you excellent, it's some things you only gotta deal with. The NFL called me late. I was like, I can't do it this year. Y'all called me late. I got a gig with the top, the top pharmaceutical company in the world. Number one attracts number one. If you're tired of girls, if you're tired of attracting dudes that's whack, you might want to go from average to act. You ain't even got to like be dealing with that. Go from average to phenomenal, he ain't even going to want to be around you. I'm just being real. I, it's, I, I'm coming across, because you know, I, I like do this. So I come across dudes who, I'm talking about hard, hard, cuss your they mama out. When I come around, they don't cuss around me. I don't say stop cussing around me, but when they come in my presence, they feel like, yo, this different. Like E hood, but this is a different brand of hood right here. <laughs> this is a PhD hood. It's a different hood. He seemed like he got the Lord. It's a different hood. So when you excellent, when you phenomenal, people treat you differently. Does that make sense? What's number four? Come on, what's number four? And you don't have to deal with no foolishness when you execute. I did 26 gigs this year and made seven figures. I said no to $500,000 before the new year started. When I was average, I had to do 200,000, I had to do 200 gigs a year to just make $100,000 when I was average. When I became phenomenal, I started going by 50. When I, when I was average, I was getting like $1,500, $2,000, and people was flying me, like I'd take three stops. I'm like, I got three planes? I go three planes? And they weren't even small cities, like huge cities. But when I became phenomenal, I started multiplying. I started getting 50 a gig. When you're getting 50 to $75,000 a gig, you don't have to do as many. And next year I told corporate, I'm only gonna do 10, but you're gonna have to pay me 100. Execution is worship. People hate whiners. People hate complainers. We hate people who are always negative. When you execute, I was in the back, they had breakfast. I was like, man, I hate to eat before like, I speak because I don't want to be whack. Like I get right you know I'm, I'm sitting here like I'm drunk. When you're phenomenal, it was like, yo, eat, bro, what you want? I, matter of fact, I didn't even say it. They, I'm, the hospitality here is so phenomenal. It was like, what you want? I was like, well, I'm good because the food is going to be cold. Like, they was like, no, no, what you want? I was like, oh, what, what I want, won't? <laughs> like, for real, for real? They was like, yeah, after you speak, but we got you. What did you want, won't? I was like, some cheesy grits is what I want, want. And some eggs, you know what I'm saying? They was like, you want some meat? I was like, no, I'm good. If the, if, the, if the consistency of the grits is right, with the cheese and the butter and the salt and pepper and a little egg, I'm good. That's all I need. You need some toast? Not if the consistency of the grits is phenomenal. I'm good. It's all based on the consistency of the grits. But if the grits is grits, like my grandma used to do, I just need a couple of little, and I'm good for the rest of the day. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Number five, write it down. What's your standard? Write that down, this is important. What's your standard? What's your non-negotiables? What's your standard? What's your standard? So I need you to go look up somebody you love. Like, if you own Beyonce, like y'all kill me. Like, uh, people, uh, people was posting Kobe Bryant, mama mentality. I'm like, don't do that. You, 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 you don't, you ain't on Kobe left. Like, you, you love Kobe enough to admire him, but not enough to be like him. Take your stuff down. You ain't, you don't represent Kobe. You ain't nothing like Kobe. Why you got his jersey on? You got a two, 1.7 GPA. Take Kobe stuff off. 
You walk around with Kobe jersey on with a 17. That's not the Mamba mentality. Kobe Bryant speaks five languages. You haven't even mastered English. You're talking about you want to be like Kobe. Kobe speaks five languages fluently. You're not trying to be like Kobe. Kobe worth billions. You're not trying to be like Kobe. You just want to wear the jersey. You just want to say you rep the jersey, but you're not repping, you're not repping the work low of the jersey. I don't just talk about Martin Luther King. I'm trying to be him in this generation. I don't just talk about the why. I'm trying to be. I don't just talk about Malcolm X. I try to treat my wife like he treated Betty to bad. I'm not just talking the talk. I'm trying to walk the walk. What's your standard? What's your personal standard? And here's what I have a problem with. I got a problem with you got a standard for everybody else. Even men these days, y'all gossiping. Dudes walking around here gossiping. Dudes walking around here talking about other dudes. Where y'all get that from? King, kings don't tear other kings down. Kings, when you a king, you ain't gotta tear another man down. Kings don't kill. King, my boy in prison right now. I'm taking care of his girl. I'm making sure she eat while he in prison. And not just eat, I'm making sure all my boys ain't no funny stuff. Like, yo, my, this my man, he in prison right now. He got three years. When he come out, his kingdom gonna stay, it's gonna remain what it was or get better when he in prison. Ain't nobody gonna take advantage of my man while he gone. Y'all talk that talk like y'all all, all of that. And then you tearing down another man. You weak. You weak. And because you insecure, now you gotta tear another man down. But here's my deal. I ain't even tripping that you talking about my man. But the stuff you talking about him, you ain't even on the level you dogging him about. You dogging my man out, you ain't even on the level. Kobe didn't have to dog nobody out. His game spoke for him. Kobe didn't have to say, this about Michael, this about LeBron. Kobe's game spoke for him. Let your character speak for you. Let your grades, you in college, let your grades, let your papers speak for you. Let your sign, your STEM, STEM, let your science, technology, engineer, math speak for you. Stop, stop running your mouth. I never claimed I was number one. The world said I was number one. And then I repeated what they said. I never called myself a doctor. Michigan State hooded me. They called me doctor. Then I started saying doctor. And I only use it in schools. And you don't have to call me Dr. Thomas. I just use it when we negotiate so you can know I'm worth what I'm asking you for. <laughs> I got to get my money back. I paid for school. Somebody got to pay for that degree. That wasn't free. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What's your standard for yourself? Let me tell you what I mean by that. I got a standard. I'm married. So when I travel the world, one of my standards, and I treat my women, I treat black women, women as a whole, like queens, but I don't flirt with nobody else. Why? That's my standard. I honor my queen. I don't, I'm not acting I, like when I'm away from my queen, I ain't tripping. When I get my check, my check go back to my wife and my family. I got standards. I don't spend money without a family be talking about it as a family. I got standards. My kids graduate from college. They work for their daddy. I got standards. I don't want them working for nobody else. And my son interned with Rock Nation. And when he graduates, he's like, Dad, I want to get a job with Rock Nation. I'm like, son, I ain't mad at Rock Nation, but I promise you, Rock Nation was not built to build you a kingdom. Don't work for your dad. I want to build you a kingdom. I want you and your wife, when you get married, you have kids. I want them to have a kingdom. What's your standard? There's certain things I don't eat. I don't not eat them when I'm not around my wife. There's just certain things I don't eat. There's certain things I don't watch on TV. I don't have cable. Certain things I don't watch. People say, you think you're better than me? No, I don't think I'm better than you. Well, you don't drink. I'm not mad at you because you drink, but some things aren't fit for a king. I'm a king. There's certain language I don't use. I'm a king. There's nothing wrong with what you're doing. I ain't mad at you because you're smoking weed. That's you. I'm a king. I lead a lot of people. I can't be them if I'm going to lead them. I can't act like them if I'm... How I'm going to lead you if I'm not... Not better than you, but for... So what's your standard? What's your standard? Write that down. What's your standard? And then let me ask you a question. What's your boy's standard? The people you're around. Because if you're hanging with nine broke people, my mama say you're bound to be the ten. What's your standard? So I start hanging with Josh and end up opening up a solar company in the south. That I'm just that all that money that we make monthly that goes to my kids or my grandkids. Then we started a real estate company in Chicago. All that money. 
And then we started a coaching program to help people. I started hanging with people who were rich, and I ended up getting rich just hanging with multimillionaires. Josh took a company from zero to 176 million in five years. That's the people that I hang around. Who are you hanging around? You hanging around people who got dreams and goals, or you hanging around with people who just living for? All right, now real quick, this is important. If some of you, you feel bad because you're not popular. Listen to me very closely. The popular people will be popular for four to five years. Some of them six, because it takes them six years to graduate. So they got two years of eligibility on being popular. And they're going to be popular right here at the university, but they're not going to be popular in the real world. Like, don't trip because they're popular right now. Don't trip. They like play, play popular. They college popular. You don't make no money being college popular. He has 36,000 likes. How much money he got? How many prospects does he have? How many jobs he got waiting on him? Are you, are you hearing what I'm telling you? So number five is what? Come on, number five is what? Number six, what's your sacrifice? What are you sacrificing? To go up, you gotta give up. What you sacrificing? What you letting go of? What are you sacrificing? You can't, you can't go to every party. Listen to me very closely, especially if you were a freshman or sophomore. I want you to go to a party, but I want you to go to the party as a celebration. You got a 1.7 GPA, it don't make you a bad person, it just means that you don't know how to be a student right now. And you need to spend all your extra time at Learning Resource Center, talking to your professors, talking to students who are phenomenal. None of your time needs to go to, I work in the MBA. I have coaches that are my clients. Guess how many, I, guess how many games I've gone to? I'm just being real, how many games have I gone to? Zero. I work in the NFL. I work with the Kansas City Chiefs. Did I go to Super Bowl? Nope. Why? Because I had a gig I had to go to. All my staff is going to the NBA All-Star Game. Guess who's not going to the NBA All-Star Game? I'm not going. I got an invite from a college. I'm going to do the college and get the break. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? You got to make sacrifices. I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and put out my videos. Somebody said that's too early to get up. Not when you're a multi-millionaire. I can go back to sleep whenever I want to. I can take a nap whenever I want to. Number six, make sacrifices. Stop calling your grown mama. You say you a man and your mama got to work another job just to keep you in school and you think you a man. You got your grandma working still. Your grandma's still working at her age and she's still sending you money and you all right with that. You all right with that. You walk around and you talk that talk like my man talking to my man while I'm talking. You talk that talk, but your grandma got a job and that don't mean nothing to you. Number seven, get so proud about yourself. Your grandma got a job. She working, you up here partying. Your grandma ain't got, she don't get to party, but you get to party? Your grandma's 70, 80 years old. She should be retired. But because your daddy or somebody in your life didn't do what you was, they were supposed to do, your grandma got to do it because they didn't do it. And look at what you're doing to your grandma. Your grandma bit, your grandma been bragging about you since the day you came to college. And it was four years passed by and you still ain't graduated. You think they ain't saying nothing to your grandma about it at the church? You think they ain't asking her? Now, uh, Willie May, I know your boy was out. I know he left and went to buy him bluff. That about five years ago, man. How your baby doing? Grandma's stupid and bears. But you don't care, because you selfish. Your grandma at the salon, you don't think they're asking about you? They know you came to college? That was, you've been, four years been passed. You making your grandma pay extra because you fooling, because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. She got to pay extra because you didn't graduate on time. It ain't free, but you don't care because you selfish and you just want to be liked while your grandma is not retired and she shouldn't be working no more. Your grandma, you actually should be working by now. And you actually should be sending your grandma some money. I know, but you cool in front of your boy though. I wish I could go get your grandma here and see how cool you were. Oh yeah, you trying to front for your boy, but your grandma still got a job. You think in the Jewish community, their grandma still working? 
You think in the Jewish community that grandma still got to go to work? You think in some white cultures, Caucasian cultures, that grandma still got to go to work? But you ain't got no pride. It don't matter to you that somebody else got to work while you get to play. It don't matter to you because you're trying to be cool in front of your little homie. Be cool for your grandma. She the one putting in work. Your little homie that you're playing with, he ain't cashing you out. He ain't paying for you to go to school. You should care about the people who paying for you to go to school. But you so dumb and so young that your boy got more influence on you than the people who should have influence over you. And that's your mama and your grandma who back at home praying for you every single day, who worried about you every single day and you ain't even in class. If you lost your mind, you get to skip class, but your grandma don't get to skip work, you so spoiled. Your grandma still going to work, but yet you ain't gotta go to class because it's raining, because your little homie wants you to. Number eight, put an expiration date on it. Put an expiration date on being a boy. Put an expiration date on it. Put an expiration date on it. Now you just heard what I just told you. In the Jewish community, you don't get to be a boy at 21. In the Jewish community, you don't get to be a boy at 21. Only in the African American community is it not an age to grow up. It ain't no age. This dude's 34 years old with, with kids, still walking around, playing around. Still ain't got jobs, still don't have no careers, still not taking care of their kids. You could be 40 years old in the hood and still smoke weed with your son. You can still be drinking with your son, and that's supposed to be cool in our community. He, your daddy got Hennessy, your granddaddy, you got it, and y'all playing cards together. At 12 years old, in the Jewish community, they give you a stack of bread and tell you to go open up a business. At 12 years old, bar mitzvah, at 12, you are being, you are being challenged to grow up. You 21 years old, you ain't got enough parties yet. Bro, you've been partying since your freshman year. How many more parties do you need? before you get it out your system. How many more parts? How many young ladies you got to date before you get serious? How many, how many video games you got to get out your system? You still on video games? My boy Toby, our artist, he on the video games. But that's your voice you hear, and they had to cut us a check. We getting checks from video games. You still playing wrong. Missing class for a video game? Do you know kids in China and Japan making video games and making money off of you and they ain't playing the games they making? They don't play the games, they make the game. You a grown man still playing the games. So do me a favor, I'm not mad at you playing games. Just give me an expiration. 30, quit. Just give me a, give me a date. I'm gonna stop playing games when I'm 35. Just give me a date. I'm gonna stop when I'm 28. I'm going to take my life serious. I'm going to make my grandma stop working when I'm 25. Just give me a date. I just want to make sure I'm making sense. Here's my last one, last two. All right, and this is for those of you who want a job. I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. I literally started companies for African-American students. I'm tired. I'm tired of you coming to me wanting to get paid, but you don't want to work. Number nine, work. I don't mind paying you. Work. Them same lazy habits you got in school, now you done brought them to my company. You expect me to give you a check, but you're not ex I gotta, you, I got, I gotta do what I told you I was gonna do, but you ain't gotta do what you said you was gonna do. It ain't fair. I gotta pull you. I gotta do more for you than you willing to do for yourself, but you still want your check. I'm tired of babying y'all. You are not a child. It's time for y'all to grow up. Work. Work, I don't care nothing about social media. It's one thing that's not gonna change, and that's work. I said, E, you number one, bro. What was you doing last week? I said, I'm number one. Bro, you going harder now than you ever went, because I'm number one. Like, you don't get to number one and then chill. When you finally get to where you're trying to get to, then you got that pit bull, you got to go for it. So my wife went MS. We built her up over the last four years. We built her health, because that's, that's what real men do. I got other women who got MS who were in wheelchairs. Why? Because their husband didn't man up. I went to every doctor's appointment with my girl. I asked doctors everywhere. I went home and got on the internet. What is MS? 
They told me it was a vitamin D deficiency. I'm like, shoot, I live in Michigan. That ain't good. Ain't no sun from December to June. So I bought my girl a crib in San Diego. I just manned up. Somebody said, you know how expensive Cass, uh, how expensive Cali is? I know, I said, you know how expensive it is for my girl to get in a wheelchair? If my girl lost her sight, you know how expensive that is? So we just gonna put in the work. We just gonna grind it out. Work! So I spoke in Detroit last weekend. Got on the plane, boom. Went to California, spoke in California. Sunday, boom, woke up. Vegas, Monday, boom. Came back to Cali for two days. Tuesday, Wednesday, boom, hit Atlanta. Hit Atlanta, boom, got up the next morning. Matter of fact, we didn't get up the next morning. We flew out, boom, went to Seattle, Washington. Stayed in Seattle, Washington for 24 hours. Boom, came back to Michigan and spoke. Work, work, work. I'm not better than Tony Robinson, but he ain't gonna outwork me. I ain't, I ain't better than Zig Ziglar. He ain't gonna outwork me. I ain't better than Les Brown. He ain't gonna outwork me. Their vocabulary is better than mine. They come from a very better background than I come from. I, but they not gonna outwork me. I'm gonna get up at three o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna grind. You will not outwork me. You might be more, you might be smarter. You might be more uh, uh, intelligent, but you're not gonna outwork me. Our ancestors taught me that if you're gonna get out of a circumstance, it's one way to get out of it. Work. You work. You work, you work, and you wake up one day and you ain't a slave no more. Your people free. We worked, we worked, we worked in the Bahamas. We worked in Africa. We worked in the uh, USA, in Virginia, uh, Louisiana. We worked, we worked, we worked. They didn't give us a break. We didn't get vacation, time. You couldn't say you were sick. We worked in those cotton fields from sun up to sundown with no food. We worked, and we worked our way out of slavery. Now y'all about to work your way back into it. Work, work, work. I got a PhD. I'm the dumbest PhD student you ever know. But I work, I grind my way through it. What did I do? I went to the library and got 30 dissertations and I studied every last one of them. So I found the one that looked like something I could write. And I studied that dissertation day in and day out, morning, afternoon, at night. I was on plane studying. I had kids. My kids traveled me. I studied. And in a year, I turned in that dissertation. And after that dissertation, I wrote 10 books. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Work, work, work. And my last book just sold 426,000 copies in, in the state of California. Are you hearing what I'm saying? With some things, you just got to work it. So stop being lazy, work, work, work. Here's my last one. My last one is you are kings and queens, act like them. Act like them. You deserve, you, deserve, you deserve everything you're willing to work for. There's nothing you can't have. I remember when I wanted to be a motivational speaker and I wanted to do corporate work. I remember being honest with myself and saying, E, you deserve it, but you, you're gonna have to make some adjustments. Write this down. If you're going to be a king and a queen, you're going to have to learn how to be a king and a queen. When you marry into the royal family in England, the women have to take a course so they can learn how to be royal. Some of y'all, I'm not mad at you. You come from where I come from. You were never taught how to be royal. I want you to study how to be royal. Because you're royal, but you can learn how to be royal. I remember I said to myself, I want to do corporate work. I think I could do corporate work. But I was missing something. I didn't have a language. I didn't have a rules. I didn't have a culture. I didn't go to get a PhD or a master's degree from Michigan State University because I wanted a degree. I, I, you, can't, you can't play a game that you're not in. You can't play the game and you don't know the rules. So I went to Michigan State University because I felt like I could do it, but I didn't know the language. Let me explain what I mean by that. Where I came from, I remember when I went to college, and there's somebody was sick and it came by and it had ambulance on the side of it. I was like, whoa, somebody spelled that wrong. Ambulance, what's, oh, that, that's not spelled properly. Where I came from, I never heard nobody use the word ambulance. Where I came from, they said, man, call the ambulance. Where I came from, I never heard anybody say, we're going to the library. They're like, we're going to the library. Right? I never heard somebody say, we're going to the corner store. I never heard R, I never heard R. We're going to the corner store. So I was like, you know what? It doesn't make me less, it doesn't make me inferior, but if I'm gonna compete with the big boys, I have to have the language of the big boys. So 
When I went to Michigan State University, I listened to everything those teachers said. I wasn't looking for grades. I'm grown. I don't need nobody to grade. My daughter called me the other day. I said, boo, how you doing that presentation? Like you had to teach the, the teacher's class. How you do, boo? She was like, I don't know. I think I did OK. But the teacher, I said, the teacher? I didn't ask you what the teacher thought. I asked you what you thought. She said, no, 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 the teacher. I said, why you keep saying the teacher? She said, grade, dad. I said, grade? Girl, you're 21 years old. Nobody care about no grades. If you put forth your best effort, and you already a phenomenal student, I could care less what the teacher said. You about to leave her classroom and go in the real world. I ask you, was your presentation good enough for me to get you a client? Care nothing about no teacher? You about to go into the real world. Can you go in front of a corporation, baby girl, and present yourself in a way? You grown now. This ain't about getting a star on your head or being an honor student, being on the dean's list. You a grown woman now. As I leave you, I told my daughter, you a queen. Did you do queen work? When you spoke, when you spoke, would your mom and daddy be proud of you? When you put your clothes on, baby girl, did you feel like a queen when you put your clothes on? When, 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 when you spoke to the, your, your student, how did they like it? She said they loved it. I said that's all that matters. You are a king. Start acting like it. You are a king, and I got a new language, and I got new codes, and I got new rules, and I became number one. Why? Because of what I went through on the streets. When you mix what I went through with, on the streets with my education, I'm dangerous. That's a crossover. I'm ambidextrous. That's a crossover. You can't stop me now. I got the resiliency of the hood and the intellect of the university. I can't be stopped. I leave you. It's your world. You at a phenomenal institution with phenomenal faculty and staff. No more excuses. You are the boss of you. There are no more excuses. I want you to work hard like your ancestors. I want you to lead this place and I want you to be phenomenal. No more average. No more good. Maybe great. But you were meant to be phenomenal. And how do I know? Because the number one motivational speaker in the world started at a historically black college. Everything I learned from that historically black college, I took it to the world. And so I challenge you when you leave to make your next move your best move and make the rest of your life the best of your life. That's my time. Thank you. Go make your mama proud. Go make your school proud. Go make your heritage proud. Go make yourself proud and leave a legacy for your family. Amen. Now we will have a moderated question and answer by Chancellor Emeritus, Dr. Carolyn F. Blakely. Dr. Thomas, Dr. Thomas, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. And thank you for your expertise, for thank your you. energy, and for the inspiration that you've forwarded to our UAPB family you. this morning. Thank you. Thank you also for agreeing to answer some questions from students who I'm sure will be here asking you some. Amen. Thank you. Amen. My name is Isaiah Bolden. I recently graduated in December 2019, and uh, I'm going to start my new career starting next week, next Friday. But I think everything is coming full circle for me because I actually listened to you when I first Amen. got here, and I'm also an untraditional student, so it's crazy that you're here right now. So my question is, I learned that the main focus that uh, led to my success is being comfortable being uncomfortable. So I want to know at your stage as being number one in the world, how are you still finding ways to make yourself uncomfortable and continue to grow and develop? Yeah, when you are an African-American male in this industry, it's uncomfortable. Like, if I, was at, if I was to tell you to name 10 rappers, you could do it. 10 comedians, you could do it. If I told you to name 10 African-American influencers, that would be difficult to do. So this is a genre that, while I speak for everybody, there's a particular weight on me as an African-American man for my community. So I feel like I'm charting new territory, right? So it's, all, it's very uncomfortable for me. I told you where I come from. I'm not college educated. My grandmother had 14 kids. Only three of my aunts graduated from high school. We worked, I'm from Detroit. We work at Ford, GM, or Chrysler, right? We, didn't, we weren't published. We didn't get degrees. So my life is uncomfortable. When I'm with my cousins and my family, like I have to dummy this down. You feel what I'm saying? Like, like my family, like they not, they don't do this. So when I'm with them, I gotta go back to just being like regular, if that makes sense. You feel me? So my whole life is uncomfortable. It's not like I'm running with 10 other people or five or three that do what I do. 
I'm here by myself. When I drove, I was by myself. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm alone. So, it, it, so my life is uncomfortable. Talking to you and saying it in a way where you can get it, but I'm not going to sugarcoat it, that's tough. Y'all would rather, like, if it's a fight on the internet, it's going to get millions of hits. My stuff going to get 30,000, 40,000 hits because it's not a fight. If I was on there cussing and, like, and nude, acting crazy, I, I would have millions of hits. So my whole life is uncomfortable because I do a work that's not entertainment. This generation wants to be entertained. So my work is hard. How do you say positive stuff and get people to like you? That's tough. So my whole life is uncomfortable. Yeah, but I, but, but, but I, I embrace that. I don't look at it as a negative. I embrace that. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate and what's your, what, what's your business in? Uh, I'll be working as a consultant, a management consultant for AT Kearney. Good. So do you know of anybody that does that at a, higher, at a high level? Yes. Uh, actually, my uncle introduced it to me, and that's why I Good. say it's a big deal for me, because I came here yeah. as an untraditional student, a yeah. uh, fry cook, yeah. someone who had a 1.8 GPA Good. and brought it up to a 3.8 GPA. While Come on, now. Give me my hand for that now. So, Come on. Yeah. Come on. Well, I just wanted to say, if you don't live with your uncle, spend as much time as you can and get everything you can from him. And whatever he's done, honor him by whatever the benchmark is, taking it to another level. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank I you, Isaiah. That. Thank you. Hello. Um, uh, Hello. Uh, hi, my name is Jordan Alfred. You got to eat that mic, bro. Eat that mic. <laughs> hey, my name is Jordan Alfred. Jordan? Yes, sir. All right. The only question I have for you is if I can give you this note. And I want to tell you personally that your work has made me a different beast. Amen. Like that wake up in the morning, that continue working, even if you're tired, that get up. All right, I want to be a computer scientist. I'm starting up and consulting right now. All I do is eat my crap. Amen. And that's widely because of you. Amen. So I just, and even if I could give it to this fella, he give it to you. Oh, yeah, no I, question. Yeah, I want yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah, give yeah. it to my man. <laughs> I'm going to be all right. Good. I got you. I'll read it. Good. I appreciate Thanks. you. Did you put contact information on the Jordan? No, sir. How am I supposed to get in touch with you then? That's not important. If you want, I can't. Uh, yeah, I'm, I may want to talk to you afterwards. So, yeah, just can't take that back. You're going to make me owe this man more money. He charged a lot per hour, Jordan. Come on, you're killing me. All right, yep, next. Okay. My name is Shakendra Tilly. I'm a senior here at the university. I'm a student athlete with the women's basketball program. Amen. And my question to you was, is what lesson, what was your biggest lesson and how do you apply it to your career and your life now? My biggest lesson is that there were some things that my ancestors were qualified to do, but they were born in the wrong time. Like they were way smarter than me. The grind was harder than mine. They just were born at the wrong time. And I have privileges that shame on me if I don't take advantage of them. That I have some opportunities that they didn't have. Do you understand I'm making $50,000 to speak? Do you understand how much money Martin Luther King would have made if he was in this generation? If Dr. Martin Luther King was on social media, do you understand I have a dream? Would have, that sucker would have went viral. I have a dream speech, like all his stuff would have went viral. On his road, he probably would have had a Nike switch sign. They would have sponsored my man. He would have been drinking Gatorade with his, with his name on it. You understand what I'm saying? That's how talented he was. He was just born in a time where it was colored bathroom, white bathroom. You get it? So my lesson is, Eric, you have opportunities that your ancestors didn't have. Don't waste those opportunities. You have an opportunity as a student athlete. You are exposed to and there are doors that are open to you that aren't open to other students. You gotta take advantage of that and not just go, I'm excited to be in ath athletics. No, there, there are things you guys get to see, places y'all get to go that other students don't get to do. Too much is given, much is required. So with all the opportunities you have, you have to take advantage of them. That's the biggest lesson that, that I get from my ancestors is take advantage of every opportunity. Don't leave no crumbs on Hey man, thank you for that question. Great question. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, how are Hello. you? Blessed. So my name is Coco Newton, and I've seen you before um, in Dallas. Me and my friend came out to see you. Hey man, thank and you. And so I just wanted to let you know, like, I am so thankful for you. Like, you do not understand how much 
you impact me. Um, I'm a young entrepreneur. I have my business, my own business, and that's all I do. And the last time I told, uh, I saw you, I gave you a hug, and you whispered in my ear. You told me just to execute, and that was like the only advice you gave me. And that's what I've been doing. So I'm just wondering, like, if you have anything else that you can give me, like today, yes. anything else? Like I yeah. took really great yeah. notes, no question. but anything so, else? So I think number six or seven, I said, it's easier to execute when you're hanging around other people who execute. So what I would say to you is you're young and you probably have this loyalty to some friends that 30 years from now you'll realize you shouldn't have done that. So as a, at a young age, get rid of all your friends. Like not be evil, but spend more time with other women like yourself who are going to conferences, who are handling their business, and those people who are tearing you down. Like leave those people alone and be very careful of the person you call your boyfriend. Mm, like the, the, you like, spoke to yeah, me. Yeah, I know, I know. I was gonna say that last. I ain't wanna hurt the oh, white feelings. Hey, Amen. But I'm just saying, for real, if you are with a person and you building all of this up and they tearing it down, you wanna be with somebody while you building they building. You feel me? And it don't mean he need to be perfect. My wife graduated before me. Her credit was better than mine. She was able to get our first house. Like sister girl was about her business. But she knew I was working on this dream of being a speaker. And while I may not have been able to build as much as she was able to build, I wasn't tearing down. And I was working hard. And so she like, shoot, I was a nurse making 65,000 a year. She's like, I'm glad I waited for you because now I don't got to work. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but it, but it was mutual. It wasn't, she build up, I tear it down. It was mutual. So for you, be in, be in a relationship with a young man who is mutually, it's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. But somebody that's making equal sacrifices that you make. If you gotta do all the work, then you his mom. And you don't wanna be the mom. You wanna be, you're gonna one day be the wife. Thank right? you yeah. so much. No problem, thank you. Hey, E.T., how you doing today, man? I'm blessed, man. Blessed, blessed to be here. Hey, this is a blessing. Hey, man. Um, I'm Pastor Roger Rogers. I brought some of my youth up today. And thank I've, you. I've sacrificed my life to do something that I love, which is give back to our community in Fortnite. And something I want to know if you agree with what I'm going to say, I teach our kids a lot of time that me is not a race issue, it's a place issue. Absolutely. And I'm a local politician with aldermen in my community. I'm teaching our kids that we got to be at the table. Yep. And whether it be running for a local office so you can be at the table with the decisions made, or being an entrepreneur that owned the businesses so you can employ your people. I noticed yeah. you said that yeah. your son is not gonna um, necessarily work for Rock Nation. They're gonna work for you because you have his best interest. Absolutely. So do you Rock agree? Nation is a great company, but they didn't build it to build my yeah. son up. Absolutely. So nobody has your best interest Absolutely. like you do. So that's yeah. the question. Do you agree that I think is not so much talking about race, but place? getting in position yeah, where absolutely. we can help out. Yeah, and I don't think it's, I don't think it's either or, it's both and. Both and. Like race plays a role in this country. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to stop you. It hasn't stopped a whole lot of our people. So you can't use race as a crutch, but you do have to understand that for me, I don't want a PhD, but if I'm gonna compete with other people, I may have to have one or two more things than they have to be considered. And so I don't, when people are making decisions about who to bring in, who not to bring in, I don't want to give them no excuse. Yeah. So if it's a university and you need a PhD, I want to have one. And I'll be honest with you, I worked at Michigan State and a lot of our babies didn't get to go study abroad. They didn't get some of the other opportunities. I had to beg for money from other people. And I realized if I got my PhD, that would put me in a position to sit at the table. I noticed that all the decision makers had PhDs at Michigan State. I was like, I need to get my PhD so I can sit at the table. Does that make sense? So make let them know it's not, it's not either or, it's both and. Race, right. they need to understand race, but more importantly, they need to understand that if they get position themselves and get in the right places, doors will be open for them as well. That's a perfect answer I need Good. to hear. Thank you, man. Thank you for saying that was the perfect answer. <laughs> Hello, my name is Louis Stevens. I'm okay, a hold up, they got you. Show them some love. Get your love, bro. Get your love. You're not going to get a whole lot of that when you become an adult, so get all your love. Um, I'm a political science major at the university. 
Okay, there we go. There we go. I'm also a trombonist in the Marshall Music Machine in the Mid South. Okay. <laughs> um, I unfortunately was unable to perform today um, for various reasons. But um, we have an acronym in the band called DPAC, uh, which stands for Discipline, Pride, Attitude, and Commitment. Um, our director and professor, Mr. Graham, always says discipline is a result of training. So I just want to know how important is discipline in regards to being successful in life? Man, let me tell you something. And you hear me. It's easier to be disciplined when you don't have nothing. It's harder to be disciplined when you have. There are a lot of things that I have access to being number one in the world. I need more discipline now than I needed when I was homeless in a high school dropout. Because I have way more choices now, good and bad. Does that make sense? I have way, I've had opportunities to uh, be on television. Um, and God told me that's not what I want you to do. I, have, I, I had opportunities with some of the top producers in the world that's going to put me on TV and like, look, we, gonna, we will make sure you make more money than you ever made in your life. And God said, that's not what I want you to do. Um, I've had more opportunities as number one. Some stuff I didn't, I didn't, people didn't even want me when I was homeless in a high school dropout. They want me now. And so I need more discipline now than I've ever needed before. So don't you ever think that as you get older, you're not going to need discipline. I need, bro, I had to get up at, I went, told you I went to bed at like 12.30 after speaking all day. And I still had to get up and exercise. Like I'm at that age where my, my metabolism don't work no more. And so if I'm going to be a certain weight, I got to get up and work out for an hour. Discipline, you know, so driving the day. I wanted the speed. Like, E, come on, you grown. Insurance, like don't do it. Take your time. So discipline is the more you have, again, the more disciplined you need to be. So tell your band director, thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. And don't, and don't, don't think he playing. You're gonna need that message for the rest of your life. Amen. Again, where much is given, much is required. Amen. Come on, let's give the band director, man of wisdom, let's give him a hand clap of praise. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The God in you. Amen. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Because of our time constraints, okay. this will be our last. Okay. Question. All right. You, She's sir. the leader. I'm Hi. sorry, guys. It's the leader. I'm Larissa Davis. I'm from Pamela High School. I'm a school librarian. And one of the things that we try to emphasize with our students is literacy. I want to know from you what uh, what has what what is the role that literacy has played in your life, and what can you tell our young people today about being dedicated and committed to yeah. being literate? And I'm listen to me, please. And I apologize that I didn't convey this message in my message some kind of way. So I appreciate you bringing it out. You live in America. We speak English. The, the greater control you have of the English language, the greater the opportunities for you. You know, all these kids that want to be rappers, rapping takes words. Does that make sense? So the reason why you have some guys who rap for two or three years and you never hear about them again is because they had a very low vocabulary, right? The, the, some of the greatest rappers, and guys, I'm not here to debate, but when we talk about longevity and how much money and influence they have, for instance, a Kanye West. I'll never forget when Kanye had a battle with 50 Cent. I was just like, yo, 50, it's a rap, bro. Like, there's no way you can compete with Kanye. Like, no disrespect, but you hood. And there is a population of people that you attract. Kanye, mama, was the English, was the chair of the English department for Chicago State University. The boy grew up in language. Not only did his album do better than 50 Cent, he took 50 Cent's lyrics and used his own lyrics against him. Does that make sense? And Kanye is considered one of the greatest lyrics and been around. Like, people don't know he wrote Jay-Z stuff. A lot of Jay-Z stuff he wrote. Why? His mama is, was a English professor. So he lies and says, I'm a, I'm a college dropout. Like, I don't like college. Of course you don't need to go to college. Your mama was college. You grew up with college. So of course you didn't need to go because you grew up in a house and then you went to Chicago State and got dropped off. So you were in an environment around education your whole life. 
So his vocabulary is, uh, when the boy talked about, I got a girl named Wendy, and he was breaking his girlfriend down, but he was talking about Wendy, Chicago, the Wendy City, the metaphor in this. It's like, this boy is a genius, you know? And so, when nobody knew who I was, I wasn't reading or writing. When the world found out who I was, master, four-year degree, master's degree, PhD. Not, I don't hang my degrees nowhere. And there's nothing wrong with hanging them, but I didn't go for that. I went because I dropped out and I never took high school serious. So I literally had to go to college to get what I didn't get in high school and middle school. Does that make sense? But I'm able to speak to governors and mayors. I'm able to go to prisons and middle schools and high schools. I'm able to write books. Like I can, I can switch, I can switch. And it's all because of, not that I'm deep, but my understanding of the English language. So I would say to every kid here, master the English language and if you can learn a second language, master that. Because if you only speak one language, you are, what's the word I want to look for? You are limited to, to English speaking territory. Does that make sense? So if you speak Spanish, you got all of that territory. If you speak French, you got all that territory. If you speak Mandarin, you got all that territory. So when you only, and English speaking people are lazy. Americans are lazy. We only speak English. If you go to any other country, they speak at least two or three languages. And so we must, since we only speak one, we need to, we need to go ahead and master the one that we speak. Thank you so much for your dedication, and thank you for that question. Thank you so much, Dr. Tom. And we apologize to those people who have a question to ask. They may be able to see you at the book signing. Thank you so much. On behalf of the Office of Student Involvement Leadership, I want to thank you all for coming out, as well as the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff. We would like to give you a special token, Mr. Thomas, Dr. Thomas, or Eric Thomas, for being here. And thank you for everything. Thank you again for joining our program, and have a great day.